It seems like the New York Giants have finally figured it out. And as a Giants fan, it's about damn time. Since the 2015 season, Big Blue had six different head coaches, not common for a franchise that has patience mostly. But after three straight losing seasons and needing a new voice, the Giants moved on from two-time Super Bowl winning head coach Tom Coughlin. And Coughlin almost did not make it that far as rumors swirled before his first Super Bowl that players grew tired of his uptight coaching and robot-like personality. But the Giants, as they tend to do, they showed patience, and it paid off. Same thing for Eli Manning, who had plenty of people turn on him after back-to-back -back seasons coming up short in the playoffs and his turnover issue becoming a glowing issue. And ironically, the man that went on to be Eli's heir apparent 13 years later, he almost suffered the same fate as well. After Coughlin, it was Ben McAdoo, a man who Eli Manning had played very well under when he was the OC and the Giants promoted him to head coach. McAdoo's first season as a head coach went great, starting 11-5 and and clinching a a wild card spot. Then a boat picture happened and it seemed like the franchise was cursed ever since, although we didn't know it at the time. A year later, McAdoo was fired mid-season after benching Eli Manning and ruining his consecutive game streak at 210 starts in favor of Geno Smith. Steve Spagnuolo took over as the interim head coach and the Giants finished an abysmal 3-13 that year. That 2018 offseason for the Giants saw major changes. A new general manager, a new head coach in Pat Shermer, and a second overall pick in the draft. But somehow, things kept getting worse. The 2018 Giants went all in to compete for a playoff spot and spent a second overall pick on Saquon Barkley and made Nate Solder the highest paid left tackle in football. They started 2018 1-7 and finished 5-11 and overall. 2019 was a bit of a youth movement as the Giants shocked the world and took quarterback Daniel Jones out of Duke and traded superstar wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. to the Cleveland Browns. Eli began the year as the starter but was quickly replaced after an 0-2 start. Daniel Jones came in, won a thriller in his debut at Tampa, and even won his second start. But then the wheels fell off. A franchise worse, nine consecutive losses for the Giants ended their season at 4-12, and, and Pat Sherman was the scapegoat and was canned after two years. Eli Manning then retires, the Giants turn a new page, and then comes Joe Judge. Judge was not heard of by many people at the time, having been the special teams coordinator in New England. He most likely got the job because he nailed the interview, displayed the disciplinary act that Tom Coughlin had, and of course was being recommended by Bill Belichick. The Judge era started off 1-7 during the COVID season, but then things turned around, and somehow the Giants went into the last game of the regular season just needing a Washington loss to make the playoffs. But then, the Eagles put in Nate Sudfeld, blatantly tanked on national television, and the Giants missed the playoffs for the fourth consecutive year. Hard to argue that they should have made the playoffs going 6-10 though, I will say that. Despite what seemed like a disappointing season, fans were excited. Joe Judge showed encouraging signs after year one and had the the support of most Giants fans. Then 2021 happens. I'll try to sum up this season as quickly as possible. Kenny Galladay, $72 million, a third and nine quarterback sneak from his own four yard line, a four and 13 record, and golf clubs in front of lockers. If you don't get the reference, here's the video. You ain't seen that crap you saw before. All right. You ain't seeing guys right now planning vacations. You ain't seeing golf clubs in front of players' lockers. You ain't seeing that stuff. Judge was most likely coming back for the 2022 season, but after making a complete ass out of himself and melting down at the podium, Giants ownership did something right for a change and moved on from Joe Judge's head coach and their lousy GM, Dave Gettleman. From 2017 to 2021, the New York Giants had a combined record of 22-59. and the only team just as bad in that time frame, the New York Jets, who had an identical record, but at least they were showing signs of improvement. For the Giants though, they had no vision. Bloated contracts, washed up veterans, often injured players, their former second overall pick hadn't looked right in two or three years, and the man that was supposed to be their franchise quarterback was barely hanging on to his starting job. But here's where it all changed. See, the Giants always have a tendency to do things in-house. They never hire GMs from outside organizations it was always in-house promotions, but not this time. On January 21st, 2022, it was announced that Buffalo Bills assistant general manager Joe Shane was signed to be the Giants general manager. Shane was the polar opposite of the Giants' previous GM, Dave Gettleman, and it brought hope to fans like myself who desperately wanted change. A week later, on January 28th, it was announced that Brian Dable would be hired as the 20th head coach in New York Giants history. Dable had a great resume, which included plenty of 
Super Bowls in New England as a position coach, a brief stint in 2017 with Nick Saban, and helping develop Josh Allen, who turned out to be one of the best quarterbacks in the league in Dable's offense. Now, while the Giants seemed to make the right hires, it seemed almost inevitable that this rebuild was going to take at least two or three years, and the Giants would have to wait a bit until they started winning again. Their cap space situation was so bad that they had to release their cornerback one James Bradbury in the prime of his career because they literally could not afford to keep him on the roster. Despite having a softer schedule, there were no national expectations for the 2022 New York Giants. Most people you'd ask expected four to six wins, and you really couldn't blame them for thinking otherwise. Hell, even myself, I had them down as a six-win team. Entering week one as touchdown underdogs, most people did not give them a chance opening up the season at Tennessee. NYG got down 13-0 at half, and every Giants fan probably said, oh boy, this is going to be a long season. But then, the unthinkable happened. Big plays from Saquon Barkley and Sterling Shepard led to touchdowns, and all of a sudden, the G-Men found themselves down six in the final minutes. After a Chris Myrick touchdown to go down by one, Brian Dable made a decision that got his team to buy in right then and there. They went for two to try and win the game. Saquon Barkley's amazing effort gave them a one-point lead, but there was still plenty of time for Ryan Tannehill to get the Titans offense in field goal range to win the game. And Tannehill did, setting up Randy Bullock for a 47-yard potential game-winning field goal. Now, knowing my Giants, these kicks always tend to go against them. Heartbreaking losses is what we have been used to. But Bullock missed it wide left, and the Giants pulled off the upset. They carried that momentum to start 6-1 that year, beating some impressive teams like the Packers, the Ravens, and of course Tennessee. And during that 6-1 start, it looked like Saquon Barkley was completely back, and they were getting good football out of Daniel Jones too. The Giants, however, did hit a rough patch with injuries in the secondary and had a 2-5-1 stretch from weeks 8-16. to But then, it all changed. The last home game of the season in week 17 gave the Giants a chance to clinch a playoff berth for the first time since 2000. 2016, and they won it convincingly. 38-10, including four Daniel Jones touchdowns and a pick six by Landon Collins, which made it even sweeter because Collins was the defensive leader on the last Giants playoff team from six years prior. In the last week of the season, the Giants rested their starters, but they kept things very tight in Philly. Their confidence was sky high, and they rode that momentum into Minnesota, where the Giants entered as underdogs. But remember that quarterback who almost played himself out of the starting job, and some people wanted gone just like Eli Manning early in his career? Yes, Daniel Jones played it flawlessly in his playoff debut, becoming the first quarterback in NFL history to throw for over 300 passing yards, run for over 70 yards, and have at least two touchdowns in a playoff performance. A masterclass for the one they call Danny Dimes. As much as the players deserve credit, which they do, none of this would have been possible without Brian Dable. I've been vocal about Dable winning coach of the year, and I think he absolutely should. The Giants at no point from 2017 to 2021, five whole ass seasons, had a record above 500 at any point. Brian Dable got there and did it in one game and he kept them there. And that's not to say Nick Sariani and Doug Peterson are not deserving because they are, but Dable did so much with so little. He put his quarterback in a position to succeed, mostly with wide receivers that people have never heard of until this year. Their defensive coordinator, Don Martindale, coached up a defense that was great on third downs and held their opponents to 20 points or less in eight of their nine wins. And in the one game off that list, they held Aaron Rodgers Packers to 22 points. Not too bad. And of course, Mike Kafka, who came over from the Chiefs, who technically was running Brian Dable's offense, but was in charge of the offensive play calling. These coaches worked miracles throughout the season, and guys from previous regimes like Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley, Dexter Lawrence, and Andrew Thomas all had breakout or bounce back years under this staff. And as a Giants fan, I know we're in great hands no matter what happens. It is a contract year for their two biggest offensive players, Saquon Barkley and Daniel Jones, and based on the salary cap still being effed up, it could be difficult to afford both. But at the end of the day, they have Dabes, they have Shane, and an excellent coaching staff. Once these coaches bring in more talent, watch out. The NFL better be on notice. The Giants were not supposed to arrive for a couple more years, but 
they're already here. It looks like they're coaching Jones to be a possible franchise quarterback. It looks like their first round edge rusher is going to be a stud. It looks like these coaches will get the most out of any player, whether your name is Dexter Lawrence or Isaiah Hodgins. And it's still not over yet. The Giants go into Philly in the divisional round as seven and a half point underdogs. But with this team's confidence riding so high and seeing Philly for the third time this year, I expect a down to the wire finish. The Giants won't go down easy. They've shown that. A little over a year ago, I wrote a letter to the Giants owner John Mara about my displeasure with the team, just simply begging him to hire a GM from an outside organization. And for me to write a letter to somebody, you know I had to be pissed. This is not the 1970s. I don't write letters. But all I can do now is thank John Mara. He finally did the right thing. And honestly, John Mara was probably influential in keeping Daniel Jones for another year. Jones was a guy that I personally had given up on. I figured he couldn't process the game quick enough, he couldn't throw with anticipation, he couldn't maneuver the pocket, and he just wasn't a winner up until this year. But Daniel Jones so far has completely proven me wrong, and I love saying that. And my god, if they beat the Eagles this weekend, it might be time for the Daniel Jones apology video. But hey, as YouTubers with opinions, we get shit wrong. It happens. But when it benefits your team and you have a potential franchise quarterback on your hands, you love seeing that. That's going to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a like, and if you want more NFL videos like this, let me know in the comments. I'm thinking about doing a Zach Wilson type video just like this. I will talk to you guys next time.